Greetings, friend. I'm going to show you how Mark Goodliffe of Cracking the Cryptic solved this vicious Sudoku. The Sudoku was sent to him back in 2020 by Paul, and it was labeled as a vicious Sudoku to solve. What makes it so vicious? And you want to know if Mark was scared of it or if he was able to get through it? Well, watch the video to find out. Click below if you want to try this puzzle yourself. And with that, it's solving time. First thing Mark did is he looked at the ones and noticed he got a couple ones here and a one here. So he's doing a little cross hatching. There's only one place for one in block four. And then following the ones down in this one, cutting across row seven, he solved for a one in block seven. And he's able to continue on and solve for a one here in block eight. And then notices that there's two places for a one here in block two and block three. So he just marks those ones using Snyder notation. So Snyder notation, anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate, you mark those. And in case you solve one of these cells, you can solve the other for that candidate right away. Also helps with some advanced strategies. After the ones, he changes focus and looks at the sixes. Noticing you have a six coming down here and this six here. It means only one place for six in block four. Leaves only one place for six here in block five. All right, then he switches over to the sevens and actually notices here you got a four, seven, eight cutting across row four. Well, I have an eight and a four here, which means this is now a naked single seven. So he solves that knowing I have a four, eight here. He sees this eight and he solves for the four and solves for the eight right away. So far, very smooth, uh, very methodical in all of his solving. And then he sees, since you have a seven here, two possibilities for a seven, so he marks the Snyder marks. And remember, the reason you're marking these is he's not really sure where the hard part of this puzzle is going to be. So he's trying to gain information by putting in Snyder marks. He's looking at the conjugate pairs. He's looking at pointing pairs, claiming pairs, what restrictions he can use to help with the solving. All right, after that, he looks at these two eights and notices only one place for eight here in block five so he solves that for an eight and then this creates a naked triple right because you have six cells filled out this has to be a three four seven he sees these two threes and goes okay i can solve for the three here in column four it leaves a four seven naked pair after doing the four seven naked pair he realized this displaces this Snyder mark right there and then we can solve for seven now because the sevens have to be in one of these two spots after solving that seven, he then starts looking at the threes and goes, okay, I have a three right here. There's only two possibilities for a three in block four. Awesome. After doing the threes, then he switches over to the nines. He sees this nine and this nine. And there's only two possibilities for nine in block eight. And now these nines are a pointing pair. They can't be anywhere else along row seven because they have to be somewhere in block eight and they're restricted to row seven in block eight and so that means only two possibilities left for an eight here excuse me a nine here in block seven all right after doing those nines he then is able to solve for a seven he sees this seven and the seven that he had just marked and he solves for seven right there after the sevens he follows where the sevens go and notices two possibilities so he marks the sevens in block eight then he switches over to the fives and sees, oh, I got two fives here. Only two possibilities for a five there. So he's marking the fives. Still not sure where the hard part's coming. He's made oh, quite, a, quite a few solves already, and he's still got some more solving left before it gets vicious. All right. After the fives, he then notices with the sixes, these two sixes and this six, two possibilities for six in block seven. And then... He sees he has a three coming down, column eight, and this three cutting across, only one place for a three in block nine. So he solves that three. And with these two threes, and then this three, he can solve for a three up here in block three. So far, still looking good. Uh, with the two threes, he marks the two possibilities for a three in block one. Great. After the threes there in block one, he looks and sees the six, and this six, only two possibilities for six in block two. And then he's able to uh, come down here to block seven and says, okay, I got these two threes. Only two possibilities for three right here. And this is nice because now 
what Mark knows is, and he talks about in the video, and I've talked about it too, is he creates what they call this mini X-Wing. You notice how the threes are limited to columns two and three here in block one. And then are also limited to columns two and three here in block seven. This is the beauty of Snyder notation, because now you can see a three is here, here, or here, or here, which means now a three has to be in column one in block four. And since there's only one possibility for three, we can solve that right away. So these nice Snyder marks cues us in. This mini X-Wing allows them to solve this three right here. And if you want to solve Sudoku better using Snyder notation, check out my free Sudoku solving guide. I'll put a link in the pinned comment below. And while you're at it, check out my Buy Me a Coffee page. This is where you can support me to create even better content for you through Buy Me a Coffee. All right, after solving this three, he looks in block four and says, okay, I got a five and a nine, two possibilities there. And now he's starting to slow up a bit. He's not really sure where to go next with this solve. Then he comes up to block one and says, okay, I got an eight here. I got an eight here, two possibilities for an eight. And then this is the part that's really amazing. There's times when Mark Goodliff is very fast at finding the way forward, and he does it. This is the part of the puzzle that's vicious. He's done a great amount of solving. He got really far along, and then he's like, hey, there's something going on with these eights. And then he finds something, an advanced strategy that you need to move forward in this puzzle. And I'm going to color it for you, and this is going to bring us up to our first pause the video moment. Okay, pause the video and see if you can find an advanced strategy using the columns three and five. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you found it. You are as sharp as Mark Goodliff. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, Mark finds an X Wing. Okay, he notices that the eights in column three are limited to row three and seven. And then also in column five, it's limited to rows three and seven because you have all these other candidates here and this eight that cuts across row one. And this forms an X Wing. Whenever you have the same candidate uh, limited in two columns, the same two rows, that's an X Wing. And it means that an eight has to be here or here or here or here. And Mark actually does color it green and leaves this green through the rest of the video. And what this means is that since an eight has to be here and here or here and here, you can't have any other eight in any of the white cells across row three and row seven. And this is huge. Now we're not done solving, but we did find the big strategy, one of the big strategies that made this a quote unquote vicious puzzle. And so what it does is it allows you to focus on this cell right here. This can't be a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now it can't be an eight anymore. So this cell has to be a nine. And that's what you need to find using this X-wing. You can also eliminate eight from right here, here, here. Well, you already got the eight there and here. And then in this row, you can eliminate the eight. You already have an eight here. You can eliminate an eight from uh, nowhere else because you already have eights covering the other squares. You want to learn more about X-wings, check out my X-wing tutorial. But if you already know and love solving X-wings, click the like and subscribe button below and share this with somebody you think would like to solve this puzzle. Okay, this is going to bring us up now to our first what if moment. What if Mark didn't find an X-Wing? Is there a way around this to get some solving done? And I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, if you don't find the X-Wing, you still need an advanced strategy to solve this puzzle. There's no way around at least one advanced strategy, which means it's something beyond a naked triple. And the only ones that's going to satisfy that are strategies involving the eights. So let's show all the eights. All right, these are all the possibilities for the candidate eight in orange. And there's the first strategy you would need to look at actually involves block one and coming down column three and out row four. You notice how there's only two possibilities for an eight along row two. Well, that's they call a conjugate pair, which means either this is an eight 
If that's not an eight, this would be an eight. So they, they feed off each other as far as the eights go. One of these cells is outside the block and the other one's inside the block. Now, if you come here to block one, you'll notice there's also a conjugate pair of eights in column three. When one of them's inside the block and one's out. So either this is an eight or that, if that's not an eight, this would have to be an eight. This forms what's called a two string kite. And I'll color it up for you to show a little bit better what I'm talking about. And whenever you see this pattern, what you see is either this cell is an eight. If this is not an eight, this cell would have to be an eight, which bumps the eight from this cell here. And this would also be an eight. So either an eight's here and any cell that sees it cannot be an eight. If it's not an eight, making this an eight, no way here, this cell would have to be an eight. So we can eliminate an eight from any cell that sees both of these. And so you can eliminate an eight from right here. And that just creates a five nine. That's all that's left. Okay. And you can get rid of that square. This is key. Now the second advanced strategy, you actually need two in place of the X-wing. It's called a turbot fish. And so what a turbot fish is, and let me get the colors for it to show you the cells. Turbot fish is a type of X chain. And what it means is an eight's either here, and an eight's not here. Eight's either here, and any cell that sees this cannot be an eight. So nothing else along column four could be an eight. If it's not there, then this cell would have to be an eight. This cell can't be an eight, right? Because this is an eight, this can't be an eight. Then this cell would have to be an eight. So you'd have an eight here. And so now you know an eight has to be here, or it's here. And so any cell that sees both of these two cells, you can eliminate an eight. So you can eliminate an eight from right here, which is that same cell where we eliminate an eight from the X wing to solve for the nine. So after you do that, you'd be able to solve the puzzle because you get that nine right there and the way you go. But that's a lot harder than just find the X wing that Mark found. Now let's get back to our solving. All right, we have our X-wing here. Now, after doing the X-wing, like I told you, Mark found this nine. And then after the nine, he's able to come down here and go, okay, I can eliminate the nine. This can't be an eight. You remember, this is either five, eight, or nine. So this actually now has to be a five. All right, after he solves for the five, that displaces that Snyder nine. And so he can solve for the nine right there, row seven, column six. And he actually has a, a chance to solve the rest of this block because you see this eight right here. That means the eight would go here and this would be the seven. And then you could clean up this block. He misses that and instead moves on to another part of the puzzle. Uh, he looks uh, where the fours are, seeing these two fours. There's only two possibilities for a four in block nine. So he solves that. And then he comes up, he sees a lot of busyness here in column three. And he notices and focuses on this cell and says, hey, that can only be a five nine which he notices that this is now a five nine naked pair, which is powerful because now it limits these two cells to three eight, because those are the only two candidates left in that column. So he marks the three eights there. And he's pretty happy. He's like, this is key. If I can solve uh, one of these cells, I can then solve the other one. And I'm just, you know, eliminated quite a few candidates from the green cells there. And so then he focuses and kind of works his way down here and says, okay, this is a three eight. What can this cell be right here? Well, it can't be a one, it can't be a three, can't be a four or five, can't be a six, seven, and now it can't be an eight because of the X wing, and it can't be a nine, so this actually has to be a two. So he notices that and starts focusing along this row after putting in that three eight. So all for the two right there. And then after the two, he marks twos in block seven. Only two possibilities there. Uh, then he comes up and goes, where, are the, where else do I have restrictions for the twos? And he notices with this two and this two, there's only two possibilities for two now in block three in the same place as the one. So it's a one, two hidden pair. All right, after doing that one, two hidden pair, he then is able to solve for a five right here because that's the only place left for a five. So he solves for the five and now he can clean up the rest of this block because you just need a two. This two means this has to be the two. That has to be a nine and he cleans up this five nine. 
But cleaning up this 5-9, he misses an opportunity to make a pretty critical solve that slows him up a little bit later on in this puzzle. And I'll show you that here in just a few seconds. But instead, after marking this 9 over there, he goes to column 9 and goes, okay, I only have a 4 and a 5 left. I'll mark that. And then he marks that there's only two possibilities for an 8. So he marks those 8s in block 9. And then... He looked over here in block seven and notices since this five covers that cell, there's only two possibilities for a five in block seven. So he marks those fives. He's getting back to Snyder notation. Again, if you're not sure what to do, start doing that marking to help give you some more clues. He doesn't quite have this puzzle cracked yet. Then he looks up and notices there's only two possibilities for a five in block one. And then he's looking at these sixes and nines. He says, okay, I got six nine here that cuts across. And I have a 6, 9 here and here. There's only two possibilities for the 6, 9 and block 3. So that's another hidden pair of 6, 9. You got this hidden pair of 1, 2. It just leaves just a 4 and a 5 left for the remaining cell in block 3. Great. And so he does that. And now he's struggling a little bit. Doesn't really see where else to go. Uh, he starts focusing here in block 8. He sees a lot of restrictions. Actually doesn't get to solve yet, but he marks the 6s and he marks the 8s. And notice is, you know, there's only two possibilities for all those candidates. And now this leads us up to our next pause the video moment. Like I said, Mark got a little stuck here. So pause the video and see if you can make the next solve that Mark saw. And I'll give you a hint. One of them is by removing a Snyder mark. The other one is by looking at a by value cell and removing one of the candidates that he's already solved. All right, I'll give you a few seconds. Bonus points if you can find both. All right, if you saw the one where you removed the Snyder mark, then congratulations, you spotted what Mark Goodliffe spotted. And it's down here with these nines. He marked this nine, which removes the Snyder nine from this cell, and you can solve for a nine down here. And if you looked at the by value cells, and remember what I said about this five, he went over this nine, Instead of going up here, you can remove this 5 and solve that cell for a 9. Then you saw the second cell that Mark was able to solve. Congratulations. And again, you get those bonus points if you did both. All right, so he solves this for a 9. And now he's able to kind of move on a little bit quicker after doing that. Because after doing uh, these two 9s, he now sees he can solve for the 6 and the 9 in block 3. And then... He's able to remove this Snyder mark and solve for the six here, solve for the one there and the two and the one, got all those knocked out pretty quick. Uh, then he actually marks fours in this as a pointing pair here in block two, because the four can't be in that cell, which means since this is a pointing pair, this can't be a four, it has to be a seven, and this has to be your four. All right, and now he's able to kind of work down here in block eight, knowing that you got the eight and the seven, he notices the restrictions and the six right there. Nice. After doing the six, he says, okay, since I marked one of these spots of the X-wing, these have to be the two eights for the X-wing. And that's pretty cool. He used those green to solve those eights right away and solve this for a three. After solving for a three, he then comes up here and notices, okay, you know, I got a four or five left. I got a four here in row three. That's got to be your five. Now he's able to solve the four and the five up there and solve for the four down here. You know, sees this eight, so he can solve for the five and the eight down here in block nine. All right, after solving for that, he cuts across row nine and he solves for the five right there, removing this. And then he goes row seven, solves for the three. And then he's able to finish off block seven with the two and the six. After the two and the six, he works his way up here and he notices I got a four and a seven in row one, or I got the four here. So that actually has to be the seven. And then he finishes the rest of block one. So that's the two, that's the eight. And he cuts across and says, okay, that's the four. And the last digit is a seven. You wanna see a puzzle that scared Mark? Well, check out this video. 
please consider supporting me through my buy me a coffee page there's a link in the description below and thank you so much for watching